Um, yes, our next speaker, Ole Jarv, uh, he is Academy Research Fellow at the Digital Geography Lab at the University of Helsinki, and he has a background in uh, human geography, uh, has studied big data such as mobile phones, social media data, and is inter interested in human mobility and how people interact, um, and how this big data can be used when you study cross-border mobilities and social spatial inequality. And his current research project is called Tracing Interactions and Mobilities Beyond State Borders Towards New Transnational Spaces, which looks at these mobilities and interactions between Finland and Estonia, which we just talked about, and also within the greater region of Luxembourg. Very glad to have you on board. Please go ahead. Yes. Um... Thank you for the introduction and it's my pleasure to join the conference and also join this panel discussion with uh, uh, renowned experts uh, on their fields. So uh, from academia, academia side, I like to broaden this discussion by adding a more people perspective and proposing a novel big data approach to tackle some of the current challenges that we have heard today. So. We all know that in globally connected society, people are always on the move and interacting uh, beyond state borders. And you see very nicely uh, made that clear in the opening speech. And now thinking especially Europe, uh, these mobilities and interactions of people crossing state borders, they are further promoted by EU's uh, spatial cohesion and open border policies and, and so on. So, and this setting has created new forms of uh, cross-border mobilities. Besides more permanent migration and tourist flows, also pointed out by Rolle uh, just briefly. So, I mean, growing numbers of people who are crossing frequently EU's uh, internal borders for work, shopping, services, to meet other people, relatives, and so on, because their daily lives are not only confined to only one country. And we define them as transnational people. For example, uh, one third of uh, workforce in Luxembourg actually lives in neighboring countries. And that means that they cross state borders to work on a daily basis. As we have heard today, um, these same, the same phenomena also exist in the Nordic countries, but uh, to a lesser extent. And um, now we do have a well-established uh, data collection and knowledge about migration and tourism. However, transnational people and their cross-border practices are less known. And uh, the reason for that is partly that we lack of suitable data uh, and to provide such information. So traditional uh, registry data or any other administrative data may be not enough to kind of pinpoint those people who actually uh, live in two different countries, for example. And uh, furthermore, Furthermore, these knowledge gaps then could even hinder uh, planning of uh, transnational uh, spatial planning, uh, cross-border cooperation, and even governance, because we have less knowledge about those people. So, for example, how to evaluate the effectiveness of uh, EU's cross-border initiatives and developments from a people perspective? We know very nicely from uh, let's say, business uh, and administrative uh, uh, perspective. And here I mean how these developments that we uh, put in place in cross-border regions affect daily cross-border interactions and mobilities of people. We don't know that very well. Um, so one solution to obtain new knowledge is uh, from big data sources such as mobile phones and social media platforms. In recent years, um, I've been examining the ways how big data can provide a more nuanced understanding on cross-border mobility and interaction of people between Finland and Estonia, and also within the greater region of Luxembourg. And um, in short, big data, especially social media data such as Twitter, 
can be seen as a spatial and social footprint of people over time that are digitally recorded and can be used to study. So, in other words, it means that big data could reveal uh, where and when people cross borders, with whom and in which languages they actually interact, and indicate uh, how engaged and uh, integrated they are to society. Uh, sorry for that. Uh, small technical issue. Uh, so, uh, and in my new uh, project funded by Academy of Finland, I aim to take a um, step further and actually seek how these people's mobilities and interactions found from uh, big data can help to study functional cross-border regions from a people perspective. And furthermore, how this can enhance uh, transnational spatial planning in the EU at large. So, for sure, many technical and methodological uh, challenges need to be tackled, in addition to privacy preserving and um, ethical issues for more transparent and responsible research. Um, however, my initial results already show the benefit of such data in cross-border research, and also UC Auhan and showed a few glimpses on that as well. So, uh, there are already uh, also other studies uh, uh, conducting the big data research in, in cross-border mobility. Um, but for example, in our digital geography lab, we have modeled cross-border commuters uh, residential distribution in the greater region of Luxembourg uh, and their daily commuting distances from Twitter data. And we have compared that to existing survey data uh, results and we have found strong similarities. So we are having a lot of encourage to continue working on, on this uh, approach. And um, currently with the colleagues from University of Tartu, we examine how COVID-19 crisis has indeed affected cross-border practices of Estonians living in Finland based on a smartphone tracking study. Um, and to just briefly conclude my uh, brief introduction here, I want to highlight three aspects. So first, that we actually know very little about these transnational people who live in uh, several countries. And more importantly, to address that we should see them beyond just uh, migration or tourism uh, lens. And uh, as Jonas pointed out, the COVID-19 is a very clear example that if you don't consider this type of people, then uh, some political decisions are made beyond or without considering those who are actually uh, a part of, of our society. Uh, and second is that um, uh, big data could be one solution here to provide new knowledge about uh, not only transnational people, but also giving more information about cross-border mobilities. Uh, from different angles. And then finally, highlighting that um, this data could indeed help in cross-border planning, policy making and, and governance at large. So, yes, I will stop at this point. Thank you. Yes, thank you very much, Olle, for bringing, bringing in big data and bringing in the people's perspectives on, on a very kind of macro level that can be examined and also be be used actually by policy making. That is that is a really good point and and the new perspective that we now until now hadn't discussed in this panel. I'm glad that you brought your your thoughts in here. Thank you thank you very much for that.